UARC is a partnership between NASA and University of California where the work is done primarily here at NASA Ames and the work is supported and managed by University of California Santa Cruz. The partnership that exists between NASA and the University of California is an important one and through this UARC relationship we're able to bring researchers, scientists, students, and technical expertise that exists not only at UC Santa Cruz, but across all the other UC campuses so that we can better support NASA's goals. We also have important relationships or teaming partnerships with industry. ACI stands for Aerospace Computing Inc. And through your contract, ACI supports uh, flight vehicle research, aerodynamics, flight dynamics, and uh, aeroacoustics. And in order to accomplish that mission, we also support facility operations for the Fluid Mechanics Lab. So the Fluid Mechanics Lab is a research facility and we do a lot of fundamental research in aerodynamics. Currently we're not able to use computers to simulate the behavior or performance of a vehicle fully. That's the reason we need wind tunnels and testing and so part of that is to better understand the flow so we can improve the modeling using the computers. So it's, it plays a very critical and vital role in NASA's programs. Fluid mechanics is the study of fluids and how they interact with their environment. Fluids being both liquids and gases. Here in the Fluid Mechanics Lab, we specifically focus on the flow of those fluids. We have a series of wind tunnels here into which we can place a lot of different models to help us understand the lift, the drag, the flow patterns around those objects. A typical wind tunnel test is performed by first designing the model. Once we've designed it to be able to accommodate all of the loads that are going to be placed on it when it's in the wind tunnel, we'll actually go and manufacture the model. We'll instrument it. We'll mount it in the wind tunnel. We'll then uh, button up the wind tunnel and turn on the wind. During the test itself, the wind is blowing through the wind tunnel. The model is seeing all the forces and moments that result, and our instrumentation is reporting to us what's happening. We use computers to record everything that's going on while that's happening, and then after the wind tunnel run is done, we sit back and we analyze the data and then go on to the next set of wind tunnel runs. So now for a water channel test, in many ways it's very similar to a wind tunnel test. We design a model, make sure that it's able to accommodate being submerged in water. We then go build the model, we then mount it into the water channel, and then we start the water flowing. To visualize flow in a water channel, we then have to inject a water-soluble dye that goes around the model to visualize the flow patterns. We record the data there solely by video and still photos. Once we're done, we go and adjust the orientation or attitude of the model and repeat. We do that until we've achieved all the data we're looking for. It's really important that we study fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics allows us to investigate a variety of topics of interest to NASA. When a spacecraft goes into the atmosphere of another planet, we want to understand how it's going to respond as it comes in through the atmosphere of that other planet. When we want to go ask pilots to land on a ship, we would like to understand how the pilots in the aircraft they're flying are going to interact with the aerodynamic environment of that ship. We also do a wide variety of generic research projects here too. One of the tests that's really interesting is we're doing work in the field of aeroacoustics. We're making a phased array that allows us to very, very accurately isolate the source of a variety of sound uh, waves. So the way we perform these phase array tests is that we mount a series of microphones in a particular pattern, and then we connect those microphones to a data acquisition system. Usually the data acquisition systems are in some kind of control room where we sit and we collect the data, and the microphones are in the field or in the position where we want to collect the sound measurements. One of the projects that I'm working on right now is an acoustics project. Um, we are tasked with taking an emerging technology in sound mapping. And we're applying this sound mapping technique to understand the acoustics of, of rocket launches and how to best optimize a rocket launch pad design. The sounds that are generated during a rocket launch are very high. 
and it's important for us to be able to mitigate those sound sources to a level that's acceptable for human ears. Another reason that we are using this uh, microphone phased array technology is also because structures also suffer from the intense vibrations of a rocket launch. And it's also helpful for us to know where those sound sources are coming from so we can understand how we can mitigate them. And with this sound mapping technique, we're able to pinpoint the exact location of where these excessive vibrations and excessive sound sources are coming from. Another project that we're doing that's very, very interesting is we're studying the flow around a parachute. As a result, we're studying the performance of a parachute and how, once it deploys, how that parachute remains stable or does not remain stable. In order to do a test on a parachute, first you spend a lot of time planning. You have to make sure that your cameras can view the parachute at all angles that it's going to be at as it swings throughout the tunnel. Once you have your camera set up and in place and you're ready to actually start taking data, just watch what happens. One of the full visualization techniques that we use is a technique called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is basically target tracking. So if we stick a target on a uh, thing that we are interested in seeing how it moves in a wind tunnel, we can then track the motion of this object. We use this frequently on uh, parachute tests. We're characterizing basically how a whole bunch of different types of parachutes fly. This work can be used in the future to create parachutes that slow down more air than what current chutes do so that we can land even higher mass objects on planetary bodies with low atmospheres. So the main customers for the Fluid Mechanics Lab are all the NASA programs, of course, and that includes the space side and the aeronautic side. Every now and then, however, uh, outside agencies will approach us and ask us to do work. We've done work for the U.S. Navy, we've done work for the Department of Energy, a variety of other agencies and groups can come in and do work here as well. What we're learning from our experiments here at FML is being applied directly to various NASA missions. We're helping with the design of the next generation of spacecraft, we're helping with the design of the next generation of ground vehicles. Going forward, I believe we're going to continue to advance the state of the art in fluid mechanic testing. We have a very talented pool of researchers here who have not only done a lot of work advancing the capabilities for wind tunnel testing, but also the capabilities for collecting data within a wind tunnel as well. Um, I believe we're going to continue to improve those capabilities well into the future.